Hey guys, fitness science, Tonka Ali. Let's look at the research and what it might be able to do. What is it? It's basically a root that is ground up and put into supplementation, and it's from a plant that's native to Southeast Asia. The powdered form is taken either through drinking or through meals or anything like that. And wow, let's see what it can do. Firstly, it has a really interesting number of chemicals within it, with all interesting chemical structures. And in terms of testosterone, this root has been shown to increase testosterone levels significantly in rat studies and human models. Its mechanism of action is really interesting in that it can increase a number of precursors that are involved with testosterone synthesis, namely pregnenolone, but also it has a really interesting effect on aromatase activity. Now, what aromatase does is it converts testosterone into estrogen, and that estrogen usually sends an inhibitory feedback signal to the brain to stop testosterone production. What happens when aromatase is blocked is that you're not getting that conversion to estrogen anymore, and so the inhibitory feedback signal back to the brain to stop or to slow down testosterone production is basically lost. So in a way, this root acts like an aromatase inhibitor and basically what happens is you get more testosterone as a result of less being converted to estrogen but also you lose that inhibitory feedback loop back to the brain and this is probably why studies have shown that when rats have been supplemented with tonkat ali their luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone is actually significantly increased probably because of the increased signaling coming from the brain to ramp up testosterone production and interestingly it's also been shown to decrease shbg and increase testosterone levels that way. Five weeks of 400 milligrams of Tonkat Ali significantly decreased SHBG. And with a decreased SHBG, it basically frees up the testosterone and it's not bound to SHBG anymore, leading to a greater increase in the free testosterone level. The second point is in terms of sperm quality and fertility. Supplementation of Tonkat Ali over 48 days significantly increased sperm quality and sperm cell production in rats. Now, the rats were initially suppressed, so they had their testosterone levels suppressed initially. So it may not be applicable to humans who are not suppressed. But as you can see in the testes themselves, this was a photo pulled from a study from 2009. And in terms of what's going on here, this is a photo from a microscopic cross-section of the testes in the rats. Now, the top image are the control rats. And then the bottom image are the rats treated with Tonkat Ali. And you can actually see the sperm cells in the bottom image are in much greater quantity and density. And this is backed up by a lot of research that shows that the sperm quality as well as the volume of sperm is actually increased with Tonkat Ali. And it could be a really promising avenue for infertile humans. In terms of body weight, male rats given Tonkat Ali had a significantly decreased fat mass. In terms of atherosclerosis too, there's been a decrease in the amount of arterial plaque found in rats that were fed a high fat diet, but also supplemented with Tonkat Ali uh, over a period of 12 weeks. And then Tonkat Ali supplementation didn't really increase erectile dysfunction scores for men who had mild or moderate erectile dysfunction, but in men with more severe erectile dysfunction, it really did improve their scores and their overall quality of life. In terms of cancer lines, uh, more specifically prostate cancer was looked at mainly because of the relationship between males and prostate cancer. Obviously males are gonna be taking this for testosterone and erectile dysfunction. So the male cancer lines are going to be looked at more. But in terms of the cancer lines, the prostate cancer line, when prostate cancer line cells were exposed to Tonkat Ali, they actually died. So Tonkat Ali had a cytotoxic effect on prostate cancer cell lines. This is really interesting and maybe an avenue of future research. However, it's not all good because there have been some studies that have shown that Tonkat Ali supplementation can actually induce prostate changes such as increased weight and proliferation of the prostatic epithelium. However, the dose that elicited these changes in the prostate in the rats was 20 milligrams per kilogram of the rat's body weight per day, whereas 10 milligrams per kilogram of body weight didn't really induce any prostate changes. So it seems that the higher the dose is, it can have some impact on the prostate that's still under study. And that leads me on to discussing what dose. Now, if you're going to consider taking the supplement, there are a few things to consider. The quality, so you want to make sure that it's actually what you're getting. Um, now, with a lot of these roots, they just throw in stuff that's probably not even the plant. Um, so it is hard, so you're gonna have to try and source it if you're thinking of trying it from a legitimate and reputable uh, seller. In terms of the dose itself, two grams per kilogram of body weight was lethal in rats. One gram per kilogram per, per body weight was like the upper limit or the upper threshold before which adverse effects started to impact the rats. Um, this is still way beyond what a normal human could take 
in a day. And the general literature seems to indicate that about 200 milligrams of Tonkat Ali in a tablet form is a good starting point. So overall, it's a really interesting route with a number of interesting properties and may actually be a legitimate testosterone booster. And what is the verdict? Well, I went into this thinking that it was gonna be shit and it turns out that it may actually be legit. I am very surprised, but the studies, especially in rat models, seem to indicate that it may actually have some serious promise as a natural testosterone booster. I never thought that a testosterone booster naturally would be viable, but Tonkat Ali seems to have promise, at least in rats. I think what needs to happen is a really rigorous randomized control trial in humans. Once that happens and we get the results from a really good trial that's looked at humans um, with, you know, obviously double-blinded placebo versus taking Tonkat Ali. Once that's done, I'd love to see the results of that and we can, you know, see if this is actually applicable to humans because obviously if it works in rats, it's not always going to translate very well to humans and that's been the case. That's why we use rats so that we don't have to have adverse effects potentially in humans. Once that's done, it's gonna be really interesting to see what the results are. But I think for now, um, the mechanism of action is really interesting in that it acts on the aromatase enzyme and it could actually have a lot of promise. So keep an eye out for Tonkat Ali in the future years as the studies come through in humans. I think there's one planned. Um, in the next few years, which is going to be a bit bigger, but yeah, not shit and actually has clinical promise potentially. So thanks for watching guys. This is a series on testosterone boosters. My next one will be coming out very soon, but thank you so much for watching. Our first one, we got a, we got a tick straight off the bat, Tonkat Ali. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Fitness Science signing out.